Hello. So before we get into this video, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for the incredible response to the last video and for 30,000 subscribers. I am beyond humbled that that number of real human beings decided that they like my content enough to want to see it again. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And with that, let's get right into the episode. A one, two, three, four. Hi, and welcome back to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is a redstone clock? Well, I'll tell you. So as is the case with a lot of redstone contraptions, it's useful to first visualize it as a black box. This particular black box has an input on the bottom and an output on top, although we will discuss later that it doesn't really need an input, but this one does. So without further ado, let's see what it does. Okay, so here I am at the input, and in order to show you guys exactly what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the lever and change to free cam, and let's see what happens when I flick the lever. And there you go, you can see that the redstone lamp over there starts blinking. And if I go ahead and flip it again, it stops blinking. It seems that all a redstone clock does is output a pulse of redstone on a constant loop. And yeah, that's exactly what it does. All right, so let me go ahead and warp right back into my body. Let's take this off and let's see exactly how it's doing that. All right, so with the black concrete gone, you can see that this circle right here is actually the clock portion. This right here is only to activate or deactivate it. I can actually punch that out and you can see that this goes on a constant loop. The torch turns on, thus powering this repeater four ticks later, which powers this block, which then turns this off, which then eventually turns this off, which turns this back on, and so on and so forth in a constant loop. And because this particular clock is on for five redstone ticks and off for five redstone ticks, it has a total cycle time of 10 redstone ticks. So this is a 10 redstone tick clock or a 20 game tick clock. This design right here is a really old but also really stable design, but there are so, so many more designs for redstone clocks, which we will get into right now. This first one is a little bit more of a modern one. You can see that it makes use of fancy comparator subtract mode action going on here. And this you could probably pretty easily follow. So you turn on this lever, the signal gets passed through this uh, comparator here into this piece of redstone, which then gets passed into this repeater, which then subtracts it from the back. So 15 minus 15 is zero. And so this all turns off. And then because it's turned off, then this turns back on and so on and so forth. And with this, with one redstone tick here, this actually turns out to be a very fast clock. This one is on for two redstone ticks and off for two redstone ticks, which makes it a four redstone tick clock or an eight game tick clock. And you can actually see from this lamp here that it's actually too fast for this lamp to turn off in time. So you can actually see it uh, working with a piston a lot better. And in fact, eh, you can slow down this clock by simply adjusting the timing on this repeater here. So you can see that now it's slow enough so that this thing actually blinks. Now you can see it's even slower and now even slower than that. Now, of course, this clock doesn't have to be made with just one repeater, right? You can actually chain as many as you want. So if I put a repeater here and then put another repeater here and then put a redstone dust here, you can see now it has three four tick repeaters and a comparator. So that is four, eight, 12, and then 13. So 13 times two is 26 redstone tick clock. Moving on to the second example, this one is a hopper loop clock. So that consists of a single item that is running back and forth between these hoppers. And if I unlock this first hopper, you can see that it just moves back and forth, back and forth. And because a hopper takes four redstone ticks to transfer an item, this is an eight tick redstone clock. But of course, just like the last one, you're not limited to just this orientation. In fact, you can make this loop as long as you want. For example, there we go. So if I make the loop just a little bit longer, you can see that it now consists of six hoppers and the item has much longer to travel before it reaches back to this comparator. And if I unflick this lever, you can see that indeed 
it takes a long time for the pulse to come back. Next up is one of the fastest common redstone clocks. It is literally just you take two observers, you smush their faces together, and they observe each other in a constant loop, and it is a really, really fast clock. Now again, too fast to be picked up by this lamp here, so if I go ahead and put a piston down instead, you can see just how fast it is. And if you want to turn it off, you just separate the two observers and it stops. Over here is another really fast redstone clock. Now at first glance you may think, no, that's just an infinite loop. But if you supply it with a one tick redstone signal, <laughs> then it just propagates through infinitely <laughs> because of these repeaters here. Now this redstone clock is a prime example of one that doesn't have an on off switch at least not natively, but you totally can if you just get creative, because in order to stop this, you would need to break one of these uh, six blocks over here. So let's just say this block here, and you can see that it cuts the loop and so it stops. So if we go ahead and build a mechanism that can both insert and remove this block here, as well as feed a pulse into this, uh, then I think we're golden. And a really easy way to do that is simply by doing that, uh, that, uh, that. There we go, third time's a charm. So if we go ahead and extend this piston, you can see that this block now completes the loop and this observer feeds the pulse into the system so that it can propagate. And then when we pull it away, it breaks the circuit and it stops. This one is a one tick pulse that is going around this two tick loop. So actually this is a two redstone tick clock. Oh, and by the way, this clock is also two redstone ticks. Forgot to mention that. Moving on to this one, which is another really fast redstone clock. This one only consists of a single comparator that feeds into itself. So if I flick this lever, you can see that it outputs a signal strength of 15 here, 14, 13, and goes into the side. This one does the math of 15 minus 13, which is two. So a signal strength of two comes out of here, and then a signal strength of one comes out of here, and then a signal strength of zero goes into here. And so because it's zero, 15 minus zero, so it goes 15, then two, then 15, then two in a constant loop. But wait a second, shouldn't this piston be constantly going up and down? Well, actually no, because at lowest, this redstone dust is a signal strength of two, which means this one at lowest is a signal strength of one. This is actually a semi-common mistake when using this clock, is that it looks like it's blinking, but it's actually not. So if I go ahead and slow down the game, you can see that pretty clearly. So this oscillates between 15 and two, and this oscillates between 14 and one. So it never actually turns off. If you really want to use this clock, you actually want to extend this redstone dust out by one more, and then you will actually get what it is doing. And putting the game speed back to normal, and you can see just how fast this clock really is. This one, by the way, is also a two redstone tick clock because it spends one tick on and one tick off. Now moving on to another old school but very wacky design. Now this doesn't look like anything right now, but that's because you'll hear a lot of noise once this starts going. I just put two torches here and here, and you can see that they burn out. Hold on, sometimes it needs a little bit of a startup. There you go. You can see that they alternate burning out. And uh, yeah, it just, it, <laughs> this, this thing's so ridiculous. To be 100% honest, I don't really endorse this redstone clock. You feel free to use it. I mean, it is by all means valid. It's just really silly. I just put it here to show you that this also does count as a redstone clock because it is blinking indefinitely and sending out a pulse at a constant rate. So there's your introduction into some very simple and very conventional designs, but what's coming up next is really, really cool. You guys recognize this head right here? Now what you have in front of you right now is the so-called Etho Hopper Clock, named so because it was invented by the brilliant and legendary Ethos Lab. Now there's several reasons why this thing is so, so cool. Well first of all, it's quite small. Now maybe looking at a couple of these other designs you might think, really, this thing is small? No, but it's actually seriously small for what it can do. The way this thing works is it has two hoppers pointed into each other and a redstone block that moves back and forth between them. 
and alternates locking of the hoppers. This is so that all the items from one hopper can drain into the other hopper before it cycles again. So you can see that now this one is draining into this one, which will then turn off this comparator and turn off this redstone dust. There we go. Pulling this redstone block over and then this one pushes it over because it receives an update that this thing moved. Uh, it gets a little bit complicated as far as that's concerned, but just know that if you're building this on your own, these do both need to be sticky. Uh, and we'll get into that in another video. But anyways, if you want to build this thing, it really is just what you see is what you get. Uh, there's really nothing hidden here. It's just two hoppers pointing into each other with items up to five stacks of items in one of the hoppers. So you can configure just how long you want the cycle to be. In order to get a pulse out of it, all you need to do is really put a torch and then run that wherever you want it. And if you want to activate or deactivate it, then you can put down a lever and then flick it. And eventually, uh, when this piston does actually fire to bring this block over to here, it will stop uh, eventually. In fact, I think a better example would be for me to put this here because it's currently draining. And you can see that because I put that lever there, this hopper has drained all of its items into this hopper and it has stopped. And so if I want to start this clock again, I simply unpower this and there we go. It starts up one more time. Now I will say as cool and configurable as this design is, it does have a couple of shortcomings. First off, you already saw that potentially if you want to deactivate this clock and put a lever on it, there could be a significant lag time before it actually does turn off. The second, of course, is that this thing runs on hoppers, which transfers items once every four redstone ticks, which means that your clock cycle will have to be a multiple of four redstone ticks. But for a lot of applications, this won't even matter at all. In my experience, whenever Etho hopper clocks are used, it's never for anything timing sensitive. Usually people are just looking for a way to get a compact redstone clock that is very, very long, which this thing does very, very well. But I'm not done yet because the Etho hopper clock actually has a really cool ace up its sleeve. And I'll show you that right now. All right, so this is really cool. So I've gone ahead and taken the output of one of these and then hooked it up to another one. And you can see that this line is going into this block and also this dust here, which is locking both of these hoppers. And you can see that this stack of blue wool is stuck in this first hopper here. Now, what will happen is once this actually runs out, there you go. You can see that only one blue wool transferred over. What this means is it will take the entire cycle time of the first clock in order to transfer just one item of this clock. And you can chain another one too. Then it will take a full clock cycle of this clock in order to transfer one item from the next one and so on and so forth. This exponential behavior makes this thing really unique because you can achieve extremely long times in a shockingly small amount of space. Chain enough of these together, and you can achieve a cycle time that's longer than the heat death of the universe. No, I'm, I'm serious. Many years ago, a YouTuber named Spumwack actually made a video on that exact concept. It's a really, really cool video, and I highly suggest you check it out after this one. Link for that is in the description. All right, enough gushing about the Etho Hopper clock. Let's move on to the next thing. So now that we've seen a few examples of these clocks, how exactly are they used? Well, first of all, we have this thing known as the auto dropper circuit. This thing is very, very common. And actually, I think Mumbo has gone on record saying that this is one of his favorite uh, redstone circuits. Basically, if you just put a bunch of items or maybe just like 16. Yeah, there we go. You put them in the dropper and they will immediately spit out until it is out of items. And there we go. All 16 of the pistons have made its way onto the floor. The way that this thing works is that it is Basically that first design over here, activated by the presence of items inside of this dropper. So you can see that the signal carries on through here, through there, into the side of there. This is in subtract mode. And it also comes up top here and powers this dropper via quasi connectivity. Now looking at this, you might be thinking, well, what updates it? And I think it's the comparator behind it turning off. That's my guess at least. All I know is that it works. So if any of you in the comments are more knowledgeable, then uh, please let me know. 
And speaking of auto droppers, here's another one, which basically just extends this piston into this really fast redstone clock. Again, quasi connectivity, except this note block is acting as the updater. And you can see that this one works exactly the same way, but it's just a lot faster than this one here. And of course, who can forget the classic or reliable item elevator. There's a lot of designs for these things, but a lot of them are actually driven by clocks. Recognize this thing here? It is yet another clock. So if we go ahead and chuck our, let's say eight pistons, you can see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, make their way all the way to the top. Basically, it is just a clock there as usual, and the signal gets propagated up through these torch towers. Now for these three examples behind me, the clocks are pretty well integrated into exactly what it does, but a lot of times clocks are just kind of slapped into the redstone contraptions as kind of their own unit or as drivers, and uh, they're a lot more common than you might think. For example, when I reverse engineered Mumbo's button, you can see that the entire health depleting system is driven by an etho hopper clock. In the fancy armor shop that I built a little while back, I make use of clocks to count the money and also refund the buyer. In the Skulk Telegraph, I use hopper loop clocks to set the transmission speed of the message. And even in the music machine, there's a clock used to insert the music discs into the jukeboxes and also pack the shulker boxes at the bottom. I guess what I'm trying to say is that even though a redstone contraption whose only purpose is to emit a pulse on a constant loop seems quite limited and niche, you'll be surprised how often you see them. And as a budding redstoner, knowing about clocks will empower you to make much bigger things with your creations. In fact, here's a challenge for you. I want you to come up with a completely original clock design that's not anywhere in this video. You can use absolutely anything that you want, just as long as you make it output a redstone signal on a constant loop. And with that, I hope you're a little bit more familiar with what the heck a redstone clock is. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and if you did, please like this video and also subscribe for more redstone guides like this. Alright, that's all I've got for you. See ya!